Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be something new. It's Hano Hano Web Application Framework, fast, lightweight, built on web standards, supports any JavaScript runtime. For me and my company, it's, it could be a potential replacement for Express when we need to build some back ends. Um, I like also that it can run on cloud, excuse me, run on Cloudflare. But we can also work on Node.js, and that's what we're going to do in this example. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Hano, and then along with that, we are going to integrate Drizzle and SQLite into the application. Depending upon how well the video does, I well, for, I will this first example. We will just run it on Node. I will do a separate video where I set this thing up because you can see here it can also work on Cloudflare and I'm interested to play around with Cloudflare. So the second video I will do will will modify the application to run on Cloudflare, will connect to Cloudflare D1, which is like a SQL 8, so we can run the whole thing on the edge. So that's what we're going to try to do. Please stick around. This is going to be a combination of some steps to set everything up and then some you know copying over codes so you don't have to sit around and watch me type. I'm going to walk through the steps of setting it up because to me that's the important part. So let's get to it. So let's look at there get started. Like I said we're going to run on node initially. So this is the way we roll. So let's get started with the create my app. We'll say auto on all drizzle let's be specific node. It's like I said we're going to move it later. And so here we'll select node, yes, npm. And now we'll cd into our directory. Let's take a quick look at what we have at this point. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward and lightweight. We just have our basic index.tx. We have our route, and we're going to run this thing on localhost port 3000. Uh, we got our package JSON here. We are going to run this to get everything up and go running. So let's just quickly run it and see what we got. Uh, so npm run run dev. And I think what I'm gonna do is I have a Postman-like utility called Thunder Client, which I'll use to kind of just show progress with the API. So we have um, localhost 3000, so let's go here. Let's bring this up and let's run low close 3000. I'm gonna get, there's no parameters. And so we get our hello Hano. So if I go back, you can see that's our first route. So we know that Hano is up and running the way we want it to run. So let's do some more uh, setting up installing our libraries. Like I said, I wanna use Drizzle and SQLite. So let's install Drizzle, uh, better SQLite and .m to help us with the environment file. And now let's install Drizzle Kit, which we'll use to kind of be able to access the database. Do Drizzle Studio. Okay, let's create our .env file. So let's do a touch .env. Let's go back in here. We are going to set our database URL. So we have our .env set. Let's close that. Close our package JSON. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create our schema for Drizzle. So let's go in here and we will create it in here and create a new directory called db. And then inside of that directory, we'll create two files, our index.ts, which we'll use to kind of create the instance of the database for us to access it. And then the, mo the other important thing is our schema. Schema.ts. So we need to create our schema for Drizzle. We're just gonna drop this in here and walk through what's going on here. So we have to import SQL from drizzle.orm. We are using SQLite core to get the values that we need to set up our table. So we create our SQLite table. User table is the name of it. We're going to create our ID, auto increment, text for name, age, email, make sure it's unique. And then we're going to use this. And then this allows us to get specific types that we're going to export that we want to utilize. So this tells us to infer the user object on a select. So you can see here, and then this insert user is another helpful one because it's the fields that aren't required on creating it are considered optional. So that's this is just kind of some helpful stuff to help you get it going. All right, so now we have our schema set up for our database. And let's go back to this other file I created here, this index.ts. Like I said, that we need to get an instance of our uh, database from Drizzle after it's all set up. So here's the code. Uh, let me just solve this types error.
Okay, that should get fixed. All right, so we're getting our drizzle instance. We are getting our database object from better SQLite. We are importing our schema from our schema file. We're getting .m because we need to get this from our database. I mean, from our .env file. Let me make sure I got that right still. Yeah, database URL. We're creating a new instance of the SQLite database, and then we're going to call drizzle with the instance of our database and the schema that we have specified, which is all of our table stuff here. Okay. Also, uh, you notice that it has JS here on the end based on the default way the, uh, the tsconfig is set up. And I don't want to go around poking around the tsconfig because sometimes in, in my videos, I get a lot of people who aren't really TypeScript savvy. And so I just want to show you what you get out of the box when you follow the instructions that are provided on the website. And so the solution to solve the problem is to just make sure you use .js when you import this. There's a much longer TypeScript explanation and there's approaches that help you get around doing this. But like I said, I'm just trying to keep this simple so you see how things work out of the box. So now we've exported our uh, database instance. So the next thing is let's set up our Drizzle config. It'll be mostly used by Drizzle Kit and also when I run some commands to do the migrations. So we'll come here, we'll say touch drizzle config.ts. We get our drizzle config file. We've imported our drizzle kit to find our configuration. This is the output directory from any output that comes from drizzle. We'll go into a new drizzle directory that'll get created. Actually, let me create that directory now to just save us the hassle. Okay, this is our schema, the dialect is SQLite, and this gives us access to our URL from the .env file. As I stated, we set this configuration up for some commands we're gonna put in package JSON to help us manage the database. So we're gonna use this DB generate script to run drizzle kit generate, which will generate the migrations, and then we'll run drizzle kit migrate or DB migrate to push the migrations to our database. And let's run those migrations right now and see what we get. And in this terminal, we are gonna run our command. We're gonna run our npm run DB generate. And so you can see it created our table. Well, it created the migrations for our table here. And then now we'll run migrate. That pushed the changes to our SQLite database. And then now we'll use Drizzle Kit to open Drizzle Kit Studio. Where did it go? NPX Drizzle Kit Studio to actually open up our database. And you can see we have our table here. And let's just add a temporary record so that when we actually start to search, we'll, we'll see something. Aaron Saunders, 25 forever. Now let's save. So we have, an, let's just put two entries. Bob uh, Wire, 45, got to hit enter at the end. That's what's happening. I'm not hitting enter. D-O-B-W-I-R-E, enter, email bw at mail.com, enter, now save. So now we have two records in our user table. Uh, we showed how to use, oh, let me make this a little bit bigger. We have two records in the table. We showed how to use Drizzle Kit. We showed how to do the migrations. Now let's create a, some API routes to support uh, manipulating this data. Okay. And now let's create something here, because so basically what I want to do is I want to call a user's route and I want to get some data back. So let's go back to our app and let's go into our source directory. And I'm just going to show, some, I'm just going to organize it this way for now. And so let's create a new folder called routes and then inside our routes, users route. Okay, and we follow the same approach that we have, that we saw here in this initial one. So actually, we can just take this to start to, to show you what we're talking about. So we take this, we go to users route, we drop in a route here, but here we're going to say user, users routes. All right. And then, yeah, let's export our default user routes, users route. Let's, uh, so we'll say hello, Hano, hello from users route. Okay. And so now we're going to export this. So you see what's exported and then we'll go back to our index. And then we have our default route here, and then underneath here, let's import our users route. So now it's, we have our users route. It's set 
slash users here. So make sure this is this is important that you remember this. So basically, what this means is that for our users route, if I go back to here, this default route is users slash. That is the default route. So let's go back here, and let's see, see here we have get, let's get users routes. Let's send, and it says hello from users routes. So all we're going to do now is let's go back to user routes. We're going to add the rest of the routes that we need here, and then we're going to access Drizzle to help us execute the queries that we want. So the default users route, we want to get all of the users, right? So to get all of the users, we first need the da database. It's nice to get a cursor to kind of help me out here. So let's, but let's talk about what it's done here. So I've imported my database instance that I created, my Drizzle database instance. So now I have my Drizzle database instance. And then I'm just going to call await deep of, on my database, select from the users table, give me all my users back. And so this should give me all my users. So let's test this and let's run this git. And you can see that I got all my list of users back. All right, let's let cursor kind of help us out with the rest. So we're going to say, you know, let's do users route post. And you can see here on the post, it's going to take a name and age. It's going to get from the JSON object. And then it's going to insert the values into the database. And then it's going to return a new user for me. Let's see if we can get this one to work also. So we come back over here. Let's just copy this JSON because we know this looks like the object that we need. Let's go switch this to a post. Let's go to body. Let's open this up and then we're gonna set our body. We don't need an ID, so let's remove the ID. We need the age, we need the email address. We don't need any of these dates. The system will create those. So we'll say Bill Smith, age 865, Bill Smith. Set the email address. We're going to do a post. Oh, oh it's uh, the problem was my my JSON object is incorrect. I can't have that comma there. Okay, now let's try to post this. Let's take a look at our response. We get our response back from our post. Then we got the changes, and it says it inserted last ID is three. Let's switch this back to get and send and look at the results because we don't need our body anymore. And we have our first one, our second one, and then our Bill Smith that we just added. So we have our routes. So let's, let's see, we're missing our dynamic route. Let's not do our update. Let's do users route dot get. I'm going to get by ID. So here we have our, we want to be able to pass an ID, get a specific user out. And then here we need to get this, the equal from our drizzle. So drizzle.org gives our ability to test for equality. But because this param is coming in as a string, we need to handle that, convert that back to a number. Okay. See, so, uh, too much help now getting from the browser. I mean, from the um, ID. So we're going to select everything from the user table where the user table ID which is a number. You can see we're hovering over this SQL column, data type number. And then we need to convert string that we're getting to a number. And then we're going to return the user object. So let's go back to our users and let's get user three. And we get user three, user one, we're getting user one back. So we're getting the kind of response that we wanted to from our endpoints. We already did a post to get well, the put. We'll just since it's going to do it for us, we'll just let the, let it, we'll just let it uh, generate all of them for us. And we're, these are just regular REST API calls using Drizzle on the back end. So for the put, we want to get the ID of the object that we want to update. We get all the parameters, and then we're just going to do the set. We'll update the items, and we will get an ID back. I'm sorry, we'll convert the ID to a number, and then we'll get the results from this query, which is just, it's, it, it's really not, let's see, actually, eh, nothing wrong with putting some errors in there. 
But let's see if we could do something more interesting. Because what I really want to do is let's try and get the updated user back. So if there's no error, if there's no user found, we throw the error. If there is a user, let's let this updated user actually be something. So let's change this updated user response. Result is fine. I like result. And then, yeah, this is what we want to do. We want to actually get the updated user and return the updated user. So error if not found. Then we'll go down here, else get updated user. And then we'll return the updated user. So let's test this one. So we'll go here. We're going to say put user one. Uh, this is user. Let's see what our last results were. So I make sure I get everything right. So I'm user one. So we'll add my we'll add my middle initial. We don't need the ID here because it's going to be passed as on the URL. We're going to leave everything the same except let's get rid of this so we don't get an error. But we're going to change the error in K Saunders, and we're going to correct my age to the ripe old age of 26. And then we have our put user one, and let's see what we get. Say so we got a response, and then it returned the updated user with the age change and a name changed. So, and then one last thing, because this kind of wraps up what I wanted to show for today, is let's just confirm all this stuff is happy on a browser. Well, hey, let's look at our database. Has this been updated? We can see all of our information's updated in our database. We can go to our browser here. You can see my updated user. And then we can just get all the users. And just to wrap this up, hopefully this what has been helpful for you to see how quickly you can get an API up and running using uh, HANA.js. We've integrated an object relation modeler, uh, Drizzle, into your application. And it's to me, it was pretty straightforward, relatively easy. Like I said, the next step I'm going to do in the video is I'm going to move all this to Cloudflare. I will switch my database that I'm using from a better SQLite and store my database locally here to using Cloudflare D1. Hopefully you found this interesting. Also, all the source code will be posted. Please check out the project, leave any comments, questions, and I will see you next time.